to the gentleman from Virginia for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate that, uh, that opportunity. I appreciate the witnesses being here today. Uh, I do have a lot to uh, get through, so I apologize if I seem short at times. Uh, I would say in response uh, to the answer to Mr. Uh, McKinley's question about Dr. Jacquard, in your written testimony you indicated that uh, China might not have grown at 10 percent per year, but energy economic models predict this growth would still have been well above 5, 5 percent while avoiding the dramatic increase in carbon pollution. So you do acknowledge that using a lot of fuel does in fact create jobs. Uh, would that not be correct, yes or no, please? I I'll think they, they, would yes, have, they would have created more jobs I I, uh, in that same scenario. Well, it would have been more labor was, intensive. Your testimony was that their growth would have been growth. 5 percent. Right. But it would be more labor intensive, more right. jobs. That being said, I, I think that at times, particularly in regard to Keystone XL pipeline, we are, sw we are straining out the gnat while swallowing a camel. I would compliment you, Dr. Jacquard that you at least pay attention to the camel. And I point to your work with the China Council on International Cooperation on Environment and Development, of which you were the co-chair of the 2009 Task Force for Sustainable Use of Coal. Yes. And while today we are talking about XL uh, pipeline, I support the pipeline. I also support the use of coal. There is some really interesting data in there. And I would point to uh, the data out of that report, 2009, which I have a copy of and have read through uh, uh, while listening to the testimony that China has increased its production of coal 43 times since 1949, uh, that, it, that it passed the U.S. to be the world's number one coal producer in 1996, that Chinese coal profits uh, are now over 100 billion yuan a year, that 2002 saw them have an 11-fold increase in those profits. And then I, I'm going to take a couple of quotes out of here because I think it is instructive long term to what we are dealing with. Nevertheless, the energy efficiency and pollution control of the coal power industry in China is still behind the most advanced level in the world. For example, the fraction of power capacity within unit scale smaller than 100 megawatts is 24.8 percent in 2007, while it is only 7 percent in, in the USA in 2007. The average coal consumption per unit coal powered electric supply in China in 2008 is 11 percent higher than that of Japan in 2005, and the emissions of sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide per unit electric supply of coal power in China in 2007 is 30 percent and 150 percent higher than in the U.S. respectively. I go on in a later quote on the same page. I am on page 13 of 47. Normally, the thermal efficiency designed for boilers is between 72 and 80 percent, which is close to the design level of developed countries. But in reality, most of the actual thermal efficiencies are between 60 to 65, 10 to 15 percent lower than identified thermal efficiency of boilers. Some boilers only have efficiency of 30 to 40 percent actual application, which is 30 to 50 percent lower than that of developed countries. 3.5 billion tons of coal are mined in China, just under a billion in the U.S. And so I think it is instructive because I don't believe that the Chinese are going to, while you paid attention in the report and, and suggested some reforms, I don't believe that the Chinese are going to take away jobs in order to make everything uh, better and more efficient. And I would also uh, submit to you that in that same report on page 19, beginning at the bottom of that page, uh, and I am going to edit this a little bit. There are five recommendations or five problems. One, the existing laws, regulations, and policies are insufficient, mostly stating principles without practical value. Four, the existing regulations and policies are issued by different government offices, resulting in ineffective supervision on environmental protection work. Five, the existing regulations and policies have no means of encouraging the widespread use of key techni techniques for sustainable development of the coal industry. I have a solution for China's problem, and that is that we use our energy in this country and our energy in North America, and we bring those jobs to the United States because we do it much more efficiently. And the bottom line is we can do it with less pollution in this country. There is a NASA study that says that, that the pollution from China takes about 10 days to get from the Gobi Desert actually camels, I think, still exist in an indigenous state, all the way to the eastern shore of, of Virginia. Folks, we have got to bring those jobs back. Keystone XL pipeline is one way to do it. We reduce the world's carbon footprint by doing so because the Chinese are using a whole lot more by being less efficient. They are using a whole lot more uh, energy to produce the same goods that we could produce if we were allowed to use our resources in this country. Wouldn't you agree with me, Mr. Stelter? Yes, I would. Thank you very much. I yield back. <laughs> Thank you very much.